Most of us know at least one thing about mercury. It's a liquid metal. It has an air of mystery, a wow factor, and a unique attraction. We may also realize it's dangerous. But how dangerous can it be? Are we safe as long as we don't swallow it? Do we really need to get rid of that old mercury thermometer? Let's look deeper into mercury and examine the truth behind the danger. Even though it's considered to be in solid form, it rolls around like a liquid. It's the only liquid metal at room temperature. Mercury in the wrong place for the wrong people in the wrong atmosphere can be very dangerous. It can also be not much of a problem if you clean it up quickly. It's a small amount. There are mainly adults there. You have good ventilation and you know where all of it is. A mercury spill is not a problem if cleanup is done the right way. If cleanup is mishandled, however, and mercury is left behind, even mercury you can't see, it can release invisible, odorless vapors for months. When it is out of a container, it releases vapors to the air. People can inhale these vapors, and if they inhale too much of them for too long, it can harm them. The longer you're exposed, the more likely you are to have that nerve damage, whether it's in your um, limbs or in your brain. And if it damages your brain, as doctors, we can't fix it. It is these exposures, ones that occur over several months, that can cause the most harm. This is why playing with it briefly as children gave us a false sense of security. Oh, you know, the most common one we hear is, well, you know, I played with it as a kid. Rolled it around in their hands, shined pennies with it. I have iron, it's metal, what's the difference? Because you can't see or smell the vapors, you don't feel anything right away, there is a perception that there is no problem with it. Because mercury takes time to build up in the body before health effects are noticed, it may be too late to reverse the damage by the time a person is diagnosed. You may be wondering, if mercury is used less and less in the home because it's so dangerous, how do spills still occur? The answer may be hidden in your medicine cabinet or garage. Most often at home, people are going to find mercury in thermometers. Most of the people that call us are concerned because they did break the thermometer. You cannot buy a mercury-containing thermometer in Michigan any longer, but people borrow them from their neighbors, they have them in their homes. The best thing to do with mercury-bearing items is to get rid of them, and the best way to get rid of them is to recycle them. Switch to digital thermometers, they're just as accurate, and go through your home and find the old ones. Then when you find them, we recommend that you Ziploc bag them, just for your own protection. Find out when your next household hazardous waste collection is. While mercury thermometers have been on the way out for some time, use of another mercury-containing item is on the rise in the home, and for good reason. Compact fluorescent lights, or CFLs, are incredibly energy efficient compared to traditional light bulbs, but they also contain a tiny amount of mercury. Many people wonder, is this mercury something to be afraid of? The CFL light bulbs are more efficient than an incandescent, but they do contain a small amount of mercury. Compact fluorescents have such a, a minute amount of mercury in them. Which is about a hundredth of the amount that you have in a thermometer. If a CFL breaks in your home, don't panic. The most dangerous thing about a CFL break, like any light bulb break, is the glass. Instructions for cleaning up a broken CFL can be found at www.michigan.gov mercury. If you have a broken CFL and do not follow cleanup instructions, don't panic. Again, the amount of mercury in a CFL is about 1 100th the amount in a mercury thermometer. Many people have broken CFLs and looked up cleanup instructions days or weeks later. The tiny amount of mercury released when the bulb broke has since disappeared without causing harm. Recycling your old, unbroken CFL bulbs instead of disposing of them in the trash is a good way to keep mercury out of the environment. Some household hazardous waste sites will accept them. Um, many of the hardware stores might accept them. Outside of the home, another dangerous place for a mercury spill is in a school. While mercury-containing instruments and free-flowing mercury have been prohibited in Michigan K-12 schools since 2004, there are occasionally incidents where a mercury-containing item has slipped through the cracks. Our worst-case scenarios are when students find some in a school, they spread it through the school system. Contaminated everything in the school. I mean, all the way from a brand new vacuum cleaner that the custodian was using on the entrance mat when they come in and they tracked it home. It gets spread all over the floor of the bus. All the kids in the bus take that mercury home to their homes. And it now goes from a one room in a school to 15 homes 
three school buses, possibly in other schools, and it just spreads and goes from there. Teaching kids about the dangers of mercury can help prevent these costly incidents. If your child comes across anything in school that contains liquid mercury, they should alert school authorities immediately before an accident happens and a small spill turns into a big problem. Because mercury affects the brain and other vital organs, young children whose bodies are still developing are most sensitive to its toxic effects. It is very important to ensure spills that young children may come into contact with are cleaned up safely and quickly. Children can also get a um, disease called pink disease. So they have pink palms and soles, they're profusely sweating, they uh, may have very high blood pressure. Children in that developmental age or a fetus in a pregnant woman, damage can be done that can't be undone later on. Mercury poisoning is not always recognized for multiple reasons. One, it is somewhat rare, so it is lower on a doctor's list of potential diagnoses. Two, its symptoms, especially in children, can be similar to common diseases. Three, symptoms often do not present themselves until a significant amount of mercury has built up in the body, which may occur long after a mercury spill has been forgotten. Typically, somebody who's been exposed to mercury in the short term, you're not going to see symptoms. The first effects that are going to be seen are going to be central nervous system effects. So you have uh, problems with balance, problems with um, the nerves in your hands. You may have tremors or feeling of numbness in hands and feet. Preventing exposure by getting rid of mercury-containing items is the best way to avoid the complicated process of diagnosing mercury poisoning. We're all familiar with warnings about elevated mercury levels in fish. How does a liquid metal like mercury end up in fish we eat, like salmon, tuna, and trout? It becomes a problem when it gets into the environment, and that can happen through a landfill or coal that we burn for electricity as the mercury to our air. When mercury is heated, as in coal-fired power plants, it can be released into the air. It can then enter lakes and streams through rain, snow, or by attaching to particles. This inorganic mercury can then be converted to organic mercury by bacteria in lakes and sediments. This organic form can then enter the food chain. As small fish take up this mercury, they are eaten by larger predator fish, where mercury can build up to significant levels. When eaten by humans and wildlife, these elevated mercury levels can cause potential harm. Fish remains a healthy meal choice. We simply have to be aware and careful about consuming too much of some kinds of fish. Eating most fish species is usually okay when done in moderation. Not all mercury spills become large, expensive problems. By cleaning up a spill the right way and right away, you can minimize the risk to your home and family. By preventing a spill and recycling items containing mercury, you can remove that risk completely. Actually, it can be quite easy and cheap to clean up if you get to it right away. First of all, do no harm. Do nothing until you get the correct advice. Get the vulnerable people out of the house, open a window, put a fan in it blowing out. If the spill is on a hard surface, like hardwood floors or tile, oftentimes a cleanup that a person does at home is sufficient. Spills on carpeting are a different animal. We can't suck it out of carpet. The vacuum isn't strong enough to do that. If it's carpet, when in doubt, cut it out. Follow up with the local health department. We have a nice little machine that can sniff out where any of the remaining amounts of mercury need to be cleaned up. There's misinformation out there. There's lots of good information out there. Um, but the Michigan Department of Community Health Mercury website is just excellent. When people have a mercury spill or any kind of concern about a chemical exposure, they can call the Michigan Department of Community Health, the Division of Environmental Health. We have what's called a toxics hotline. Comprehensive guides to identifying mercury-containing items, safely recycling them, or cleaning up small mercury spills are available at www.michigan.gov mercury. Recycling really is um, the best way to try to manage mercury. There are alternatives for just about everything with mercury in it. Mercury is very easy to eliminate. We don't really need to have it in our homes anymore. So why not take care of it now and not have to worry about it?